What's up, everyone? We are on our final prospect breakdown of this draft season before my big mock draft special in a couple of weeks, and I saved one of the very best for last, Vanderbilt linebacker Zach Cunningham. He's been, I, I guess you could call him one of my guys throughout this entire pre-draft process. His stock has fluctuated up and down and up and down. A lot of people out there in the draft media think he's more of a day two pick, but I always have and I continue to believe that he is a slam dunk first rounder. And in a nutshell, here is why. If you are a team that is looking for a true middle linebacker that can rack up a ridiculous amount of tackles and shut down the run in between the hashes, Zach Cunningham is the best linebacker prospect for that in this class. Ruben Foster, of course, from Alabama, has a good shot at being the first linebacker taken overall, but his skill set is very different from Cunningham, and to me, he's more of a true will linebacker rather than a Mike. So there are probably a bunch of teams out there that value these guys way differently on their boards depending on if they're looking for a Mike or looking for a Will. But for the purposes of this video, we'll just be talking about that Mike spot and how Cunningham fills it perfectly. As the middle linebacker or Mike backer in a 4-3 defense, you have to be able to do four things very well. Diagnose plays quickly, have the short area burst to get into your run fits on time, take on blocks in the second level and shed them effectively, and of course be a reliable tackler. If you can do those four things above all else, you'll play in the National Football League for a long time, and in my opinion, Zach Cunningham absolutely checks all four of those boxes. For starters, his length for the inside linebacker position is incredibly rare. He's got 34 and a half inch arms, which is just insane for someone at that position. Hell, 34 and a half inches is the same length as Javian Clowney and JJ Watt, and both of them have above average arm length for defensive linemen, let alone for a linebacker. And the best benefit of having that length is that it helps him take on blocks and shed them extremely efficiently. Offensive linemen, tight ends, and fullbacks just can't ever get a clean shot at him because he's just so long and can outreach them at the point of attack every single time. And for his frame, despite only being around 235 pounds, he's got a really strong lower body to anchor against blockers and hold his ground. When he gets those hands inside and extends in his punch, I mean, he can stop tackles and guards dead in their tracks with that lower body power. One of my favorite snaps from him in the entire season came in the Florida game on the goal line. The Gators put in one of their defensive linemen, CC Jefferson, in at fullback on offense, and Cunningham met him in the hole and put him on his ass. Keep in mind that Jefferson weighs 270 pounds and Cunningham weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 235, and they were meeting at full speed here. And Jefferson actually got lower in his leverage on the collision, so at least based on the theoretical laws of physics, Jefferson should have won here, but Cunningham still just buried him on contact. And not only that, but after he worked off that block, he got in on the tackle on the goal line and kept the running back from crossing the plane, saving a touchdown. Don't let his frame fool you, this dude is tough. If you want to make the game a street fight in between the tackles, that only plays into what he does best. He lives for games like that. He loves working through the trash and meeting the ball in the hole. It's his biggest strength by far. And to be honest, that's why he's the most natural, pure Mike linebacker in this class. I do think he needs to improve his upper body strength when it comes to other areas like tackling and space, but we'll get into that later. In terms of lower body strength, like taking on blocks and just being an all-around physical presence in the tackle box, he's already got that covered. But anyway, going back to talking about that arm length, when you go down the line of elite linebackers in the NFL, Cunningham outreaches all of them. Luke Keekley, 31 inches, Navarro Bowman, 33 inches, Dante Hightower, 32 and a half inches, Anthony Barr, 33 and a half inches. I mean, the list goes on and on, and it really drives home just how much potential Cunningham has as a run stopper if he can weaponize that length. When you can outreach guards on the second level and keep them out of your chest, they can't block you, period. And if you can't be blocked, you're going to be extremely productive in the NFL, period. That's why Cunningham averaged double-digit tackles in every game he started in the SEC and blew away the numbers of pretty much every other linebacker prospect in this class. And on top of that length and ability to shed blocks, he's got very good short area burst and very good instincts. His overall speed is very average, but in a 10 to 15 yard area, he can close with the best of them. In fact, his 35 inch vertical at the combine was the best among all true inside linebackers at the event, and his broad jump was second best by only one inch. So his raw testing numbers back up what you see on tape, which is that when he puts his foot in the ground and gets downhill, he can get to the ball in a hurry. So in essence, you've got a long, stout, explosive middle linebacker with a nose for the ball and a track record of heavy production. What's the downside? Well, like I just alluded to, he's not the rangiest defender out there. 
You've heard the term sideline to sideline linebacker, but Cunningham is more of a numbers to numbers type of linebacker. Meaning if the ball is kept within the two sets of numbers on the field, he's fine. He's got enough speed to get to those spots and make literally every tackle all game long. But when the ball is allowed to get outside of the numbers into the boundary area, he doesn't really have the juice to shut it down before any major damage can be done. You look at this snap against Georgia, for instance, where the H-back leaks out to the flat and gets a first down on the edge. And while Cunningham is able to eventually force him out of bounds, it was still a pretty good game. Cunningham ran a 4.6840 at the combine, which is fairly average for a linebacker. If this was, for instance, Ryan Shazier or Darren Lee or Luke Keekley in coverage, this is probably only a one or two yard gain because they've got great speed. With Cunningham, though, it got a first down. In fact, Cunningham's biggest criticism, which is missed tackles, can also trace its origins back to his relatively average speed. A big theme among the tackles that he missed are that they often came from behind a ball carrier as they are out on the edge, meaning he doesn't quite have the speed to get to the edge and meet them head on. He's always chasing and reaching from behind, which is a pretty hard tackle to make when they're pulling away from you and you can't put your full body into the hit. He's got long arms, sure, but at the same time he doesn't have the pure upper body strength to drag down a running back with only his arms as they run away from him. And he's strong, like I said earlier, but not strong in that particular way. So when you read about Cunningham's tackling being suspect, just know it's really more of an issue with his top speed and weight training regimen than it is with his actual tackling technique. The good news is that his tackling everywhere else other than in pursuit on the edge is really good. He uses that God-given length to wrap up ball carriers, and when he's able to bring his full body into the hit, he doesn't miss very often. He is very, very fundamentally sound in that area, so I wouldn't worry about him just sliding off of running backs in the hole and allowing big gains up the middle. I mean, you don't make as many tackles as he did if you have bad tackling technique. So yeah, the negative narrative on him is pretty overblown at this point. He hits people just fine. Honestly, if you want to mitigate Cunningham's weaknesses and maximize his strengths, the answer is very simple. Build your defense to have great force players on the edges. Whether it's your defensive ends, your safeties, your corners, your 3-4 outside linebackers, I don't care who it is that's performing that role, but someone on every single snap needs to be able to hold the edge and turn the ball back inside the numbers. Because again, if the ball stays within the numbers, Cunningham is so damn instinctive and explosive and downright slippery off of blocks that he can make every single tackle. If you've got a good strong safety that can set an edge and let Cunningham do the rest, I promise you that your overall run defense as a unit will skyrocket. He is just that good inside but he needs help in order to make that kind of impact. You look at the Georgia game last season and all of those great running backs that the Bulldogs have, and because those Vanderbilt DBs were able to consistently set an edge and turn everything back inside, Cunningham was able to have one of the most remarkable games for a college linebacker that I have ever seen. I mean, ever. It was an amazing performance. 19 tackles, two and a half for loss, a pass deflection, Oh, and he made the game-winning tackle on a fourth and one to stop the ball short of the sticks. He literally won them the game. When he is allowed to patrol the middle and just do what he does best, it is really, really fun to watch. But again, you need to build around him and flank him on both sides with strong edge defenders so that he can perform in that role. On passing downs, Cunningham is also very reliable in zone coverage. He's not the most fluid linebacker out there, but he uses that explosiveness and length to be an asset in coverage. I think he'll be more than adequate at the next level in third down situations. If you want to be a true three down linebacker in the NFL, you have to be able to cover without getting exposed, and Cunningham is good enough in that area to not get exposed. That huge length also comes in handy for jamming tight ends and breaking up passes in hard to reach places as well, so that's a bonus. In short, to me, he's a three down defender, no question. So to review, Cunningham is a pure middle linebacker through and through. He's strong at the point of attack. He uses his length very well to stack, shed, and work through traffic to get to the ball. He's got good instincts and can diagnose plays very quickly, even if he can get a little bit over aggressive at times. He's also a reliable man and zone defender in coverage. His biggest negative, tackling, isn't really a technical issue, but it is caused by not having great top end speed or great upper body strength. However, with the right strength and conditioning staff and the right personnel around him on the field, I don't really think that'll be a big issue in the pros at all. His best team fits, at least to me, are all in the back half of the first round. The Lions, Dolphins, Giants, Raiders, and Texans all make sense in back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back picks on day one. The Chiefs also make a ton of sense considering they need to find a long-term replacement for Derek Johnson sooner rather than later, 
and they also have a ton of great edge defenders already on the team in Justin Houston, Eric Berry, and Marcus Peters. If Cunningham does somehow make it past that gauntlet of teams in the early 20s, don't be shocked if he goes to Kansas City and adds yet another explosive piece to an already explosive Chiefs defense. I can't really think of a better fit than that, to be honest. I mean, he's a damn good player, and there are probably a lot of teams that would love to have him on their roster. So no matter what, he is a slam dunk first round pick to me, and I think he's going to man the middle of his future NFL defense for a very long time. All right, that's all I got for this week. As is tradition, I would first like to thank this week's new donors on Patreon. This channel has been steadily growing throughout this entire draft season, and it's all thanks to people like you that donate and contribute to keeping me semi-employed on YouTube with your hard-earned money. I really, really appreciate it, and thank you so much again for everything that everyone has already donated. It means so much to me. Now, unfortunately, next week there will be no new episode because I will be in the middle of working on my first annual Film Room Mock Draft special. All of you Patreon supporters have been asking for a mock draft, and you're going to get a big one. But it is going to take a lot of hours to put together because it's extremely long, so expect that to drop two weeks from today instead of the usual one-week interval on the release schedule. So, with that, I will see you in two weeks with my first and only mock draft of the season. Until then, later. Later.